Hi, I'm Dr. Kurt Wooler. In some of the, the previous recordings, I've talked about methyl B12 therapy, specifically methyl B12 injection therapy. And I wanted to, to describe a real interesting um, situation I had. It's about a year, year and a half ago. Uh, I had a mom come into my practice with a young child, and she wanted to do methyl B12 therapy for her child, who was having some typical attention problems and focusing problems. He was language delays. And so we went ahead and implemented it for him. And mom, you know, the mom had described the fact that she had suffered with attention problems most of her life um, and was, you know, hoping to try some methyl B12 for herself as well. So I went ahead and prescribed her the methyl B12 injections. And about six weeks later, we had a follow-up. Child was doing fine. So I decided to ask mom about her experiences. She says, well, you know, I'm, I'm not really feeling a big difference as far as the, my, a better attention at this point. But I am noticing that when I look somebody in the eyes, I don't get a headache. And I thought, well, that's pretty interesting. You know, can you explain that a little bit more? She says, well, all my life, I've always had fleeting eye contact. So whenever I looked some in the eyes, I would actually get head pain and a headache in the back of my head, right back in this area here. And so, well, that's pretty interesting because in many of the parents that I've worked with who have older children or you know young adults who can verbalize how they feel and if they can't verbalize some of them can gesture how they feel almost universally they'll indicate that their head feels better and I had one individual who you know would pat himself on the head as an indication that he wanted the B12 so you know I, I was talking with her and I you know obviously thinking about this later was you know what was going on with her well the visual cortex is at the, is the back of the head so visual information that comes in through the eyes is transferred to the back of the head and this particular individual when she had that eye contact it was causing pain in the visual cortex and this is one reason she was, was not able to um, hold an eye gaze for for a prolonged period of time and I was thinking about the young kids who have fleeting eye contact and and how this may be one reason why, why some kids uh, have poor awareness of what's going on in their environment, but also have poor social skills. Because if it actually causes a physical pain response to look somebody in the eyes, then they're going to be missing those visual cues, those facial expression cues um, that are needed in order to have that one-on-one -on -one human to human interaction. So, you know, we, we see a lot of things in, in autism with, with children on the spectrum that aren't always easily explainable, but when we have adults who can step forward and say, hey, that's how I feel, or you know, I get a headache when I look somebody in the eyes and it was improved by methyl B12, and then we have parents come back later and say, you know, my child's eye contact is much better, you know, you have to wonder, are we seeing or are there more kids on the spectrum who are having the eye contact problems? Are they avoiding the eye contact because, it, because it's actually causing some type of headache or some type of physical pain in their body? So I thought it was an interesting um, situation. One more piece of the puzzle, if you will, uh, I wanted to share it with you. You know, just something that maybe you can relate to um, with your own child. So thanks.